when I started kiteboarding, the only way to get exposure was mainstream media, you know, newspapers, TV, and that sort of stuff. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the Basics Podcast. Today we get to sit down and talk it out with Kevin Langery, who's been a pro kiteboarder since he was 12 years old, he's now 30, so he has been in the kiteboarding industry for a very long time. So it was awesome to get to sit down and talk to him, to dive into his story a bit, learn why he started a vlog, learn what it's like to win a competition like the king of the air. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. Let's go. <laughs> I guess it's officially on. We can kind of just start the podcast. <laughs> We're yeah, on. So what's up, We're man? Well, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, dude. Thanks Thank for having me. Dude, thanks for taking the time, man. Because for me, this is kind of just a big experiment, kind of a tool for me to, you know, have a reason to sit down and talk to you. So it's, it's cool. Thank you for taking the time, man. Exactly. No worries. No worries. All good. So how is things? Exciting. Maybe this will be a new uh, chapter for me as well, man. New right? podcast. Right? Like it, <laughs> it's, it's another one of those things. It's kind of like the vlog. It's becoming a thing that you just hear about all the time and more and more people are starting yeah. to consume it. So, you know, why not? And then the beauty with these podcasts is you can, you can actually uh, make them a bit longer. You know, I feel like with my vlogs, I want to do it quick, quick, quick. And sometimes yep. I, I want to tell stories, but I don't want to make them way too long. But I see with these podcasts when you're driving around or you're just... Yeah. at work and have a quick listen to it i think it can be uh, yeah it could be interesting definitely man that's kind of one of the things i like about the podcast as well because vlogs instagram all that stuff it's cool but it shows like a very small like side of who you are whereas with the podcast sure. it's kind of more real life because it's just normal yeah. conversation you can't like be as perfect as yours want to be the whole time so it's kind of another cool way of sharing you know for sure for sure no definitely <laughs> definitely so yeah, yeah good stuff Cool, man. So, yeah, thanks so much for, like, just, you know, taking a sec to talk it out. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I have, like, a few questions to kind of just guide us, but it's kind of very conversation-based, so if you want to stop or ask anything, feel free to go do so. Um, sure. But, yeah, starting off, I kind of just want to go into your backstory a little bit because I know about you, but I don't really know, yeah. you know, what young Kevin Langery was doing or how this whole kite journey started. So if you could maybe jump into a little bit about that, that would be cool. For sure, for sure. Well, um, when I was a little kid, my first dream I can pretty much remember was that I was uh, being able to fly. That was uh, my first ever dream. And I think a lot of people had that dream, you know, being able to fly. And um, I was uh, trying all these different kind of sports and uh, I wasn't really feeling it. And um, then um, one day my parents bought me a little, little kite, just a two-line triangle kite. And from day one, I was hooked. I was like, I, I want to do this every day, all day, you know? And I was seven years old. I lived in the Caribbean on the island of St. Martin, close, uh, close to where you're from. And um, then every year, I got a bigger kite and bigger kite until I got a, um, a power kite. And that kite was dragging me over the beach, and I was just loving it. Hmm. And then uh, when I was nine, I uh, started surfing. And I, I was hooked from day one on that as well. And then uh, when I turned 11, that was actually the first time I saw um, kiteboarding for the first time. And it was like uh, two of my favorite sports combined. And I was like, wow, this, this is it. You know, this is almost like a dream come true. This is something, this is something I want to do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I got into it and, and uh, I was hooked. You know, this was something I could finally, like this was finally a sport where I could feel that was uh, that was something that suited my my needs. You know, I wasn't the best kid at school. I sucked at school. I hated it. Felt like all oh, my creativity was just being flushed down down the drain. And um, and especially because I knew what I wanted to do. I had a passion and I had a dream uh, in front of me. And school was just holding me back. So I tried to like still finish off my school, but at the same time put a lot of effort into kiting. And um, yeah, then in, in 2001, they had a World Cup year in, uh, in Scheveningen in Holland. And that's where I met like uh, all, my, uh, all my heroes, you know, like Robbie Nash and Flash Austin and Max Bow. And um, yeah, they inspired me to become pro. Wow. Super cool, yeah. man. That's crazy. And yeah, that's, that's kind of a similar story for me too. You know, young kid, wasn't into school that much. Like it was kind of because I started kiting kind of around the same time as you, 10, 11. So, you know, you still yeah. have a lot of time in school, but you, it's windy and you want to go kiting and 
yeah, for me, yeah. it was like Andre Philip, who was the guy who was like, whoa, that's that's a thing that you can do, like that exists. And then, yeah, it's like a role model, yeah? Yeah, completely. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, dude. So, yeah, it's a long story. Um, So when did it go from like you, okay, seeing that you wanted to go pro to like actually, you know, pursuing that journey full time and trying to actually go pro? What was that like? What was the process from young kid to like, okay, now I got something and now you're where you're at, you know? Well, I've always been a, a competitive kind of guy. So um, I always wanted to, yeah, to win with anything. You know, at school, if we were doing sports, I always wanted to be the best. So that's uh, a natural thing that's been inside of me since since I was born, I guess. And um, yeah, I, I, I got inspired by, uh, by those guys. And then I was like, I want to see, I want to do competitions. But then um, I was only 12 years old and you were... You had to be 14 to 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 do the Dutch Championships, and uh, and uh, so I had two more years to train, and then I, I was training, 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 and then finally when I was 14, I was able to compete, and uh, I managed to win. Like there was no, I was just up against the big guys, so I managed to win that competition, and uh, I, I didn't really expect it, uh, expected that, but then um, yeah, that was the first time I was like, oh, you wait a minute, maybe this 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 might be possible, you know, to, to get to travel around the world and, and, uh, and compete. And uh, from there, I went to uh, the next Dutch Championships, won that again. Then I went to the World Tour, to the PKRA, and uh, did that for many years. And then, um, yeah, became world champion in 2009, hmm. which was like a dream come true. Yeah, wow. Amazing, man. Sick. So it was just comp to comp, and you just, you know, kept doing well, and it just led to, you know, more opportunities, I guess, huh? Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, yeah, for me, uh, the competition side was my way to, uh, to, to, to get out there and to, to follow my dream, you know, that way, um, sponsors were sponsoring me and I, I, I had to, the, the chance to get a bit of money and, and that money I could support myself to travel around the world. And, um, yeah, that was a good start to, to make a name for myself in the kiteboarding scene. Hmm. And, uh, and now, now it's you know starting to change a bit. It's uh, the competition side of the sport is getting less and less, and it's uh, getting a lot harder now, I guess, for for the youngsters uh, in the competition scene because all these federations are fighting against each other. Now it's sort of chilled out a bit, but uh, you know the other side of it, it's you know we got all these things, <laughs> phones. Yeah. You can make yourself uh, very valuable to 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 sponsors, and uh, there's still so many opportunities. Yeah, for sure, man. And like, what are your actual thoughts on that? Because, you know, yeah, it's definitely changing before, like when you were coming up, it was comp only. That was really the only way you would get noticed. That's the only way you would do anything. Whereas now, like with social media, with vlogging, with podcasts, with all the different, you know, places that people are spending their time, there's actually, yeah. you know, becoming a whole new side of where people can kind of almost just do that and become very valuable to sponsors and create opportunities and stuff sure, like that. Sure, maybe even more valuable. Yeah, like that's, that's the thing. Like for me, it's very interesting because I've been kind of wanting to do exactly this, like the media side, yeah. the story side, the yeah, lifestyle side. Totally yeah, you did a total different route than I did. Yeah. I did more competitive side you did more the videos and, and and pictures and that stuff yeah and like and, uh, for me now it's like like whoa now it's actually becoming much more of a like real thing because back when i started i kind of always wanted to do this and it was like people kind of saw like i i was persuasive enough that i was able to like work it but now it's becoming like yeah. much more of a like okay now this makes sense yeah but i i think the beauty of i actually had to talk about this this subject you know we like, well, kiteboarding is a very niche sport, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and to get kiteboarding into the mainstream media, like when, when I started kiteboarding, the only way to get exposure was mainstream media, you know, newspapers, TV, and that sort of stuff. But there's, with a niche sport like kiteboarding, you can't get yourself into that because you, like other people, or the mainstream media wants to show soccer or tennis or all these other sports. And yeah, you know, I was I was struggling, you know? With, like with a niche sport like this, the, the big... Uh, TV channels just don't don't want to broadcast what we do, but I think now the beauty with the phones and the Instagram and the social media platforms, as long as you are creative, there's all these abilities to create your own uh, your own audience, mm -hmm. and uh, and and I think that's that's so cool. Like the time we live in, you don't have to be you don't even have to be the best kiteboarder in the world. You know, mm -hmm. you could be 
you can just, just be a like cool make... guy, yeah, just a cool guy who loves one thing, and like you just be the guy for that, and you just start yeah, to form like yeah. a community, you know. Yeah, and I think um, using your creativity in in that side of the sport, I I really love, you know, because I've I've just been competing like this for for over fifteen years, and I'm still sometimes like that, you know, during mm-hmm. the King of the Air. But I feel like now with 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 doing a vlog more and doing more the creative side and 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 showing what what our sport is really about, it really opens up my vision and uh, and I really enjoy it. I really get inspired from, you know people commenting on my videos and, and uh, sharing it and sharing the love. And yeah, that keeps me, uh, keeps me motivated to keep on doing more. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It's definitely like a beautiful time. Like I love that as well, where like you can just have full control of like what you want to put out and you put it out and it connects yeah. with real people. And it's like a kind of a direct connection, you know, yes, it's still through the internet, but they're, like they're consuming exactly what you wanted to put out. Not like through exactly. a magazine article, which is edited by multiple people, all that stuff. Like, so this is like purely yeah. your thing that people are getting, and a lot of times it connects really well. So it's a real unique time for storytelling and just connecting yeah. with people who are into what you're into, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I, and I think for the young for the youngsters now as well, you know, the, I think if you start with kiteboarding, this there's just another opportunity to to you know make money out of kiteboarding. You know, there's the the competition route. There's the the the, the vlog slash uh, social media route. And I think, uh, yeah, there's there's just so many uh, possibilities. Yeah, definitely, man. Like, so what do you think it's going to be like in the next five years? Like, how, what do you think is going to happen with the competition scene and, like, this whole social media side? Do you think they're both just going to start, I don't know, getting their legs? I think social media side is definitely going to start just becoming more of a powerhouse. But what are your thoughts on, like, the competition scene? Because, you know, it has been wobbly over the few years. Like, what do you think well, is going to happen I- with that? I think if there's not going to be a drama, a dramatic change, the competition scene is going to stay. It's going to go like that, like how it is going now. To be honest, mm. like 100 percent respect for all those guys that do all those triple handle passes, like Bebe and Yuri and those guys. Like fuck what they do, I can I can yeah. even get it in my head. Yeah. But like, uh, it depends what we want, you know. And I think if if you want to commercialize kiteboarding. And I know some riders do want that, some don't want that. But I think if you want to go like the commercial side and, and get more money into the sport, get more people into the sport, that way we as professional athletes can make more money, the brands can make more money. Um, we need to figure out a format that's that that's appealing to a lot of people and 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 very uh, easy to understand. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, that's one of the main things kiteboarding has been lacking mm-hmm. over the over over the over so many years and. Uh, and um, I think if we can create a format where uh, even if you put your grandma on the beach, she will be entertained for the whole day. Yeah. You have a good format. And I think the king of the air is, is actually a competition that is, is in that right direction. Mm-hmm. But uh, the hard part from that is that you can only really do it in Cape Town because the wind lets it. Mm-hmm. And if you in other spots like you see now with the, with the air games – like if you go to Germany and it's like 50 knots, it's kind of lame, you know. Yeah, not the so same thing at all. Yeah, it's it's a very fine line to to um, to figure out what that what that perfect format is. I don't really know it yet, but I definitely have some ideas where I think uh, it can be more valuable for the media to to look at and where we can build uh, our own brand as riders, but also the the, the kiteboarding brands can can get bigger and. Uh, and uh and eventually sell more kites mm-hmm. yeah that's the goal just to yeah. help the sport grow and you know get more gear in people's hands get more people shredding you know so yeah for sure for sure interesting man it's cool to hear that from someone like yourself you know because as i said earlier like this was kind of my vision for a very long time and like it's taken a while yeah. for it to like become you know where you can see oh there's potential for it to really start to take over so it's cool just to hear yeah. that from someone who's been so focused on like the comp scene and is now seeing like, you know, different sides of things. Yeah, um, for sure, yeah. And that kind of leads into my next question, man, because like how long have you actually been a pro rider for? Ooh, <laughs> I was uh, 12 years old when I signed my first contract. Damn, that's And uh, that was the first time I got, uh, I got a paycheck. <laughs> and I'm 30 now, actually. I turned 30 like uh, a month ago, a little wow. over a month ago. So yeah, 18 years in the business and... Uh, yeah, still going strong and still still want to keep doing what I, I'm doing. You know, it's still my favorite thing I'm uh, I do, and I, I want to keep on doing it for as long as I can. 
Yeah. Because I feel like, uh, yeah, if you follow your dream, it never feels like working. And, um, and if you can follow your dream and your passion, I think, uh, it, uh, it, it, it gets the best out of yourself, you know? Definitely, man. Definitely. So like, but what's, what's that journey been like, you know, from 12 year old, 12 years old to now, like, how have you been able to like consistently, like, you know, make sponsors happy, keep yourself relevant? Like, you know, how, has how, what's your, I guess, strategy or what advice would you give to someone who's like, you know, coming up and wants to like figure out a way to do what we're doing, you know? Yeah. Well, my strategy was just to, to keep loving kiting, you know, mm. and uh, it, it sounds weird. But uh, if you do something you love to do, but you do it too much, you start hating it. It's, it's like eating your favorite food every day. You eat your favorite food every day. After a while, you, you, you hate it. So what I found, like I, I went a little too far where I, at one point I hated kiteboarding. I didn't want to, you know, even pump my kite anymore. I was like, I was done with it. I was like, this is, this is not something I want to keep doing. So one of the lessons I learned is, is you got to keep a right balance in everything you do in life. And uh, especially if you do, if you found a job that you really love, you got to find that right balance where you don't do it too much, but you still keep on challenging yourself. And, uh, and I find that still challenging sometimes, but I, I, now I know what I really love and what I, uh, I just love kiting, you know, and, um, I've changed as well. Like I, in the beginning, I was just only freestyle, freestyle, freestyle. And now I try to open up my vision and get more into foiling. And sometimes I do sessions. I just ride up and down on my twin tip. I don't even have the best session of my life, you know? And, uh, and I think that's, that's really important to do. Oh yeah, for sure, that's, man. That, that's key. And like, for me, it's been a similar thing, you know, cause I've been kiting since ah, like 14 years now as well. So like, after a while as you say if you do something every day and you like focus on one thing every time and like it doesn't always work out you kind of you can definitely get burnt out so for me it's the same thing like i'm so happy like foiling's a thing now like that for me that was like a whole whoa this is like almost a new sport this is still kiting still a thing i love but even cooler because you can ride in like wind you can go exploring places you'd never ever really be able to go on a kite so yeah keeping it fun is definitely key you, you get that same I, when I started foiling I got that same that same bug uh, as what I got when I started kiteboarding you know you'd look at the trees and be like oh it's windy it's windy I gotta go I gotta go and I got that same thing with foiling it's funny yeah it's, it's mind blowing man I just love it like it's just it's literally yeah. like a whole new sport the same but I think things like, things like that are very important and not even only with kiting I think in your day to day life you know yeah that, that's the message I want to give to a lot of people as well. That you got to find something that you love doing and, uh, and, and, and keep the right balance that you always keep loving what you're doing and, uh, yeah, where you don't burn out. But that's hard sometimes. Yeah, that's super hard, man, because a lot of times I know for myself personally, like, you know, you are doing what you love, but then you just, you know, you obsess over it and you, you do burn yourself out. And then, like, there are times where you're like, man. Am I doing the right thing? Because, you know, you've just been like lost in your, your dream for so long that you can just think it's not the right thing. But finding that yeah. balance is key. You just got to be aware of it. Yeah. You may not always be totally balanced, but just remember the injury that. helps with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Put the brakes on. Sometimes the hard, the hard, uh, the hard way uh, works with that. Yeah. yeah. No, I've had, after my injuries, I was, it really helped me appreciate what I have. And uh, sometimes you're just caught on that train, you know, and you just keep going, 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 going. And then all of a sudden you don't even know where you're going. Mm-hmm. And then with an injury, you hop off that train and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait a minute, where am I? You know, which yes. direction am I really going? And um, yeah, that's one of the, the, the beauties of being injured, I think. <laughs> so a tip from Langui, if you're feeling burnt out, just get injured and you will totally be recharged <laughs> after <laughs> a few yeah. weeks off. <laughs> Awesome, dude. Oh, that's fun, man. Um, so like, you know, what what do you do? You have any big plans or big goals, like, you know, in the years to come? Like, what would be your, like, one of your ideal visions to have come true in the next few years? Well, one of uh, one of the things. Well, I want to, of course, keep on enjoying what I'm doing. That's that's my number one priority. Um, I want to, of course, defend my uh, my King of the Air title mm-hmm. next year. 
that's something I'm uh, I'm focusing on on hard. And then another thing I wanna I wanna just inspire people. And I, f- I find like throughout my YouTube channel I can I can really inspire people with uh, with the sport of, of kiting. And um, yeah, I wanna keep on focusing uh, on that and putting a lot of time and effort into that. And I feel like that's uh, yeah that's that's something that 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 really works. Mm-hmm. And and something I love to do because you know you make that video, you build it, you put effort into it, and you get a direct response from people, and that's just so motivating. Mm-hmm. For sure, man, it's, it's it's crazy. You're building a community of like super passionate people and reaching them directly. You know, so it's a beautiful thing. For sure. Yeah. So that's uh, that's what I'm gonna do in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked dudes, so it's basically same thing. Just continue to build, continue to just get better at the whole overall, I guess, mission, huh? Yeah, and jump over thirty meters. That might be another thing I want to do. Yeah, those are pretty solid goals, man. I guess that <laughs> that helps directly with the king of the air as well, huh? Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Oh uh, yeah, cool, man. I guess we can probably kind of almost wrap up now. One, a few last questions. Basically, king of the air, like how important is that to you of an event? It sounds like it's you know one of the most important events, like what is the whole atmosphere of that event? Because it's been around for a long time and you obviously value that whole environment a lot. What is that scene like? Well, the King of the Air is just something magic. You know, I've, I've been competing on the real tour for, for so many years and, uh, and it was great, but there is no such thing as, as the King of the Air, just the whole build up. It, it can, the whole event can be held in one day. And um, we just wait for the most epic conditions, and then that's when the event's going to be uh, be held. And and I love that, you know. I love being being there with with with, with like eighteen of the best riders in the world, and everyone is pushing themselves. And and that competitive side really comes, uh, you know, comes up again when I when I think about the king of the air. I just want to come out on top, and that that that. that um, the competitive side that's been in me for so many years uh yeah really helps me to to do well in competition and especially the king of the air and uh, yeah it's just mag- magical it's definitely something you got to check out <laughs> yeah definitely man you can tell from the videos online it's definitely the atmosphere is insane just because it's such an extreme yeah. event so many people who come out for it and you know I, I really like that you managed to squeeze in a vlog during your your comp this year it's, just, it's cool to see that yeah. side you know to kind of see you behind the scenes of you like you know doing your thing and like i was just stoked that you like actually made time for like actually still doing a vlog when you're trying to focus on such a big thing you know yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and the whole atmosphere there you know the whole um all the the people there they're so supportive of this and this is literally the only event like i've been competing for over 15 years this is the only event people talk about um the entire year mm. like the whole real tour at the end no one was really following it anymore you know they were like oh who won the last event it, a lot of people like even some of my good friends didn't even know mm. and king of the air like i've all people coming up to me is like oh well, are you ready for the king of the air and that whole support is just makes it extra magical yeah yeah definitely man that's cool well i wish you best of luck to like you know the next event i'm sure you're gonna give it a y'all and you know hit that 30 meters mark or more. <laughs> That's my goal. Yeah, dude, super awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, anything you want to add, any last points you want to touch on, anything you're curious about, anything you want to talk about as far as kiting or anything like that? No, dude, I think we should uh, go kiting soon together, right? Eh? Yeah, dude, let's make it happen. It's been long overdue. I think the YouTube community would love that as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You should come to Holland for one day and then uh, I'll come to uh, your place for a day. Right? Do like the polar Nick, opposites yeah. of our worlds. That'll be pretty cool. Coming to, uh, Nick is actually coming uh, coming here tomorrow. Okay. We're going to get like 30, 35 knots tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, Nick is flying in for just a day. <laughs> it's going to be uh, going to be wild. Wicked, man. I look forward to any footy you guys manage to get. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We're going to get something cool. Sick, dude. Well, I guess, you know, thanks for taking the time, man. Maybe we'll do another one at some point. Or if not, definitely sure. a YouTube video would be super cool. All right, dude, I guess. Peace and love. Thanks for the time. Later. <laughs> okay, guys, and that's it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. It was pretty awesome getting to sit down and talk to Kevin. If you want to help support the show, if you want to help my channel grow, you can share this with a friend, leave a comment down below letting me know who you want to see on the podcast next. And you can also check out some of the links in the description down below to buy a T-shirt like this one. Where's the foil, brass? 
because uh, all that stuff definitely helps me continue to grow and turn this into a channel that just has everything any kiteboard would ever need to know all right guys i'll see you guys soon in another video peace love and big ups